On today's All Hands on Tech, we stopped by the Viz Lab at the University of Texas, a state-of-the-art facility where staff explores the intersection between human perception and large-scale visual analysis. With 80 30-inch widescreen LCDs totaling 328 megapixels, 40 6-core Intel processors, and a 32 multi-touch display. We learned about Lasso, the tiled 46-inch monitor display and how it impacts BIM and virtual design. So design coordination, you're, you're actually virtually constructing. Um, so that's why BIM is sometimes called virtual design and construction. We're trying to uh, virtually construct before we actually go to the field, um, and we're identifying those problems as, as early as possible, coordinating them before we go to construction, uh, solving them, and then going to the field. Because once you identify a clash in the field, it's got much um, larger impacts in terms of, of schedule and costs for your project. And I had a PhD student once use Lasso as part of her, her uh, PhD research to collect data from, from experts. So we were interacting with 3D models, mm -hmm. um, and Lasso is a multi-touch display, so think about it as a giant iPad. Okay. But it recognizes, recognizes 32 points oh, wow. uh, simultaneously, so if you have a, a, a meeting and, and that um, piece of equipment, it flips and becomes a table. Um, so you're actually capturing how people are interacting with models. In the design coordination meeting, let's say that there's um, an HVAC duct that's clashing with a fire protection line. Um, and in the design coordination meeting, they notice that, they make a decision mm -hmm. um, that, let, let's say, the fire protection line has to move down two inches to make space for the HVAC duct. Um, that usually is captured in static 2D images with an annotation on it. What she was doing was actually attaching that uh, solution to the actual object in the 3D model. And after thousands of, of, of uh, pairwise solutions that she captured, we would then use artificial intelligence to train new models and new clashes to predict how experts would uh, make the decisions. So how experts would, would solve those clashes. And we were using that to train novices, to cha train students that are really tech savvy, right. but might not have the experiential knowledge to to know what to do uh, when they see certain clashes, and so we were able to train students in doing it that way. So I'm a believer of teaching fundamental knowledge. So I do a lot of technology in both the classroom and research, but I really shy away from being too solution-centric or too software-centric in, in my classes, because what I, I want students to get out of of, uh, of their experience here at UT is can, they can go out and learn from themse themselves. If they have that fundamental knowledge, they can pick up uh, software as they go. Uh, but they need to have that curiosity and the critical thinking of trying to evaluate what, uh, what solution is best for the problem that they're trying to address. So understanding the problems well and understanding the capability and how to assess uh, different technologies will go a long way in the industry because that way they can adapt to, to new technologies that are coming out. The School of Architecture and Engineering are actually doing joint uh, studio classes okay. and they actually hold their, their presentations here in the Viz Lab. Um, and this is used as, as a collaborative space between, between schools as well and, and again because um, you, can, you can really, it's, it's much better to show people's design you know, in these large screens than, than having to print hard copy. Click to subscribe and see more at BuiltWorlds.com.